makers could do tomorrow to start, in your view, putting us on the right track? One thing. Uh, yes, I think the one thing I would say, and Rachel, I'm serious about this, a lot of them just ought to resign uh, and get out of the way. So, uh, you know, this is really true. Um, unfortunately, uh, they're not about to do that because somehow they persuaded themselves that all of this, uh, you know, all of this easy money and debt and so forth uh, is going to um, make the country better. It's not. Uh, so they're there. We're stuck with them. And uh, I, you know, to be very honest, most people come and they have a 10-point plan to tell you how we're going to solve all this. Just follow. Uh, my plan and, and not what uh, you know the existing leaders are doing, but I don't have a good answer uh, to tell you how to get rid of them. I do think that if we really were serious in this country and wanted to take back our government from the PACs and the money interests and the uh, you know all the lobbies on K Street and all the special uh, interest groups that dominate everything, then we would have to abolish incumbency. And how can you abolish incumbency? There is a real, there is a way to do it. And that is we need to modernize our constitution to the 21st century. And one thing that you need to, you could do is lengthen terms to six years. How do we get two-year terms? They spend all their time running for re-election, raising money. How do we get two-year terms? Because in 1787, they had to go back and plow the fields. And that's why Congress met in December and, you know, two-year terms made sense. Today, let's have six-year terms, one term only. You can't run for re-election. You're a citizen legislator, senator, house member uh, for six years. You uh, never have to go to a PAC meeting. You never have to raise a dime. You don't have to put out your tin cup. Uh, you're not uh, going to be in the business of placating all the special interest groups that uh, dominate inside the Beltway. And by, by the way, if we're going to do that, then let's uh, outlaw private money and campaigns entirely, make it publicly funded only. And remember, if no one can run for re-election, they only run once. And if they can only use public money, they can't use rich man money, labor money, poor man money, or any other private money. Then you can have a six or eight week campaign. That's when the public money is available. They run, they get elected, or they don't. They spend six years trying to really uh, deal with the problems of the country. Then they go back and run their shoe store or whatever they were doing before. I think that's so radical, obviously, it's not going to happen. It would take a constitutional amendment. But I think it's a measure of how far away we are from recapturing the machinery of our own government. Because if we don't do something like that, if we don't deal with the curse of incumbency, if we don't deal with the curse, and I was a congressman, so I know, of congressmen spending every day going to another fundraiser or meeting with another PAC or getting their voting record just so, so that they get the right rating and, uh, you know, the very special interest groups support them. If we don't change all of that, I think the system's only going to get worse, not better. How many reformers have we had? over the last 20, 30, or 40 years. I went to Congress uh, right out of graduate school. My first job in 1970 as an aide on Capitol Hill, I think they told you I worked for John Anderson, was to work on campaign finance reform. And here I was, 24 years old, and I said, my goodness, we're going to clean up this system. And uh, John Anderson and a guy by the name of Stuart, or Mo Udall from Arizona, he was a famous uh, liberal Democrat uh, member of the House, you know, had a bill, and that was 43 years ago, and nothing has changed. The whole system has only got worse. We have the Supreme Court making this unfortunate Citizens United decision. Uh, and so, you know, people can uh, come and tell you that they want to clean up the process. This is what Obama said. And the first choice that he had, and just, I'm not trying to beat up just on him because I don't want to get started on Bush because you guys, you all have to go home. And uh, if I get started on Bush, uh, you know, I would never finish. But Obama ran in 2008 as the outsider. Uh, you know, uh, you're going to have uh, change that you can believe in and all of that. But the second bill he signed was a uh, omnibus appropriations bill that had 8,750 8, earmarks in it. He spent the whole campaign saying, I'm against earmarks, and I will never sign a bill with an earmark. And these earmarks were outrageous, bridges to nowhere, and all the rest of the pork that you know about. And yet, 
the first, the second act after he signed the stimulus bill, which in my judgment wasted about $800 billion, uh, the second thing he did was sign a bill that was totally in violation of the uh, good government uh, uh, platform that he ran on. So here, 1970, we were going to clean it up. Here we are, uh, Obama finally, uh, uh, an outsider gets elected, and uh, it's the same old uh, policies over and over. That's why you need radical change, and without it, uh, it's going to be, unfortunately,